So in this video, I'm going to try to touch base on what's happening in the van architecture space and why is the industry shifting towards SASE architecture, which is secured access service edge. Now, for that, I think um, a quick overview of what is still happening in the very large enterprise customers and uh, enterprise customers typically have a lot of remote sites, hundreds and thousands of these. So scaling on these remote sites on a van architecture is really the challenge. Even today, a very typical large enterprise is very data center centric. They have data center or data centers, and then they have applications that are on-prem, and they have firewalls in front of all the applications that they're trying to secure. And then they, for the internet, they backhaul the internet traffic for users sitting in remote sites coming through MPLS into the internet and what have you. So they've got MPLS as their primary transport and secondary carrier MPLS2 as their secondary failover transport or load balance transport. So that has been or is still in most cases the architecture for van using MPLS as a transport. And it's MPLS has its pros and cons. And if you look at this column here, gives you a medium level of quality of service. The cost is high, but reliability is up there. Agility is very poor, and the security is given by or provided by firewalls, traditional firewalls architecture. Flexibility is very poor, and then scale and manageability is good. But if you deploy MPLS architecture, all you need is a CE device on each of these remote sites, a CE device here as well, which is typically a router. And you've got private connections. So you know it's very secure and it's very private. But the inherent problem with MPLS is that when you're spinning up a new site, you have to wait for your carrier one and carrier two to provide those circuits and they can take up to three to six months or more. So it's very slow to provision your remote sites and get it connected to your data centers slash data centers. Now that architecture shifted to SD-WAN almost 10 years ago and customers started using MPLS as their primary transport and internet as their secondary because a lot of their applications moved to the internet as infrastructure as a service, software as a service, platform as a service, all of this services started becoming matured and cheaper. Customers started shifting their applications to the cloud. And then internet obviously is, is a uh, becoming very, very reliable and cheap as well. So now your users are not getting back call to the data center for internet, like in this case, they get the internet right off their site because now the circuits are so cheap and easily available even on LTE that it's just making sense with LTE bandwidths slash other circuits 50 to 100 meg 300 meg circuits are easily available for for remote sites to access the internet but obviously for data centers connectivity your primary mode of transport is still mpls but in the sdn world sd van world you are using an architecture that requires sd van devices on each of these thousands of sites. So now you've added a, most likely a CE device and an SD-WAN device 
that is an additional manageability and life cycle maintenance cost. But again, the, the flexibility part is much better than MPLS if that's what the goal is. And then obviously internet access and internet application, all of that is secured with, and the, the quality of service is high because SD-WAN is much faster in convergence than the traditional routing protocols. MPLS depends on traditional routing protocols. SD-WAN is an overlay with IPSLA mechanism. So the QoS is much higher than MPLS. Cost is medium, and then agility is me, you know medium agile. Or you still need to provide these on-site devices on each branch that you're spinning up. And obviously, it's it's a very good scale compared to uh, compared to a traditional MPLS. You're not waiting for you know three to months. Uh, months life cycle or provisioning cycle like an MPLS. So that's your SD-WAN that competed with MPLS. It's very popular. It's replacing MPLS now pretty much. And now SASE. Now if you look at the SASE architecture, secured access service edge, the QoS is, is obviously very high, similar to SD-WAN because it's also an overlay mechanism with IPSLA. The cost is high compared to anything else, but you achieve all of this. It's very highly agile, very quick to provision, and it's got all the features that you need from a security perspective. It's got IPsec, SD-WAN, it's got ZTNA in particular. And then for firewall services, you can have all of that deployed as software. Instead of deploying SD-WAN, firewalls, all of this stuff on-prem, you can deploy all of this as software with a click, essentially. So flexibility is really high and scalability and manageability is excellent compared to the previous two solutions. So SASE architecture looks like this. Not everybody is going to move to SASE because obviously the cost is high. But for large enterprises, SASE is a very attractive solution. You would probably still have your data centers with uh, your legacy application that could not be or cannot be moved to the, the cloud. And all you need is a traditional CE device that takes a circuit in. And now you've moved to internet and internet as a transport but you have to work with a given vendor or customized solution yourself to deploy the service in a pop point of presence. So now SASE is cloud centric, SD-WAN is brand centric, and MPLS was data center centric. Now, cloud centric requires that you deploy all of these services like SD-WAN as a service, firewall as a service on these given POPs that have these features. Uh, working with vendors who will, most of the time will have a POP that's available closer to your remote site, or even if it's not close, it's got, as long as it's got an internet connection, your remote site would be able to get all these features and then your internet access and IIS and SAS and PASS and all that good stuff is readily available from the site itself. Now for the remote users and vendors, ZTNA, which is Zero Trust Network Architecture, it's an agent-based solution where you deploy agents and SD-WAN focused on egress mostly and then fire, it depended on firewalls. 
secure the applications. ZTNA is an added feature with the SASE that is agent-based for ingress-based traffic. Anybody who's coming into the network gets into the POP, gets assigned a tag or a profile that tells that remote user whether you can access this application or uh, go on data center. All the permissions and security is assigned to that remote user based on his credentials. So that's a very enhanced, advanced technology and architecture. Obviously, uh, this is the price that you pay, but it, gives, it solves a lot of problems. You do not get into a traditional VPN-based solution where your remote users are coming in to a VPN, and then after that, they're all uh, accessing the entire network until they have, unless you have firewalls, which causes a sprawl of firewalls. That's another problem to maintain all of that stuff. But it's a, it's a very scalable, manageable solution. And it requires POP architecture, internet POP architecture with the vendors that you're choosing to go with. And it's very cloud centric, but that's the evolution that you are witnessing now from as MPLS to SD-WAN to SASE where again, a lot of these solutions, depending on the customers and how their business model works, could work. Some of the traditional old style, old school, large customer will still choose to go MPLS. Others that are not that conservative will probably choose something in the middle. And the cutting edge customers who are growing their business at a higher pace would most likely give a, go with a, with a SASE solution, but that's essentially in a nutshell what's happening in the WAN architecture uh, uh, today. And there's so many solutions out there uh, for SASE itself that each time you read uh, any one of them, you're like, okay, what are the components? How are they solving this problem? of the van architecture. And most of them would refer to pop architecture. Uh, some of them are just using SASE as a marketing architecture, it's marketing stuff. And they're not actually providing a pop based. So you gotta look out for that, for, for, that, uh, for that stuff. Hope this helps.